In this video we'll talk about um, doing some site work. What we're going to do is actually, there's three ways to bring site information in. You can get a CAD file from a friend or family member or whoever consultant. Uh, that file can have 2D or 3D data. If it has 3D data, you're better off because you don't have to do anything. Revit will create the topo for you. Um, if you have to do it by hand, and you go up to Massey and Site, you'll hit Topo Service, and you will actually set the elevation and trace the lines, which can take a while. Right? You, you hit elevation, maybe it's three feet, trace the line, elevation four foot, trace the line, and that can be a pain. The other options are create from imports. Uh, for instance, import from an instance. So if you have a CAD file, it'll actually use that. So that's what we're going to use for this example. I'll go ahead and close out of this. Uh, we want to uh, bring in a CAD file. So we're going to go and hit, uh, let's say, insert. We're going to go link CAD. And when you hit link CAD, insert link CAD, we're just assuming we got this from the structural guy. I'm going to go to my desktop again and look for the Revit training folder. You should have one that says Revit training on it. And inside of it, if you're lucky, you'll see when it says Autodesk Revit Architecture Site and Structural Design Class. Whew, that's a mouthful. But if you open that up, you should see when it says Site DWG in it. Okay, y'all have that? Go ahead and hit Open, and it, AutoCAD is going to bring it in. And there it is. Now, when it comes in, you, all you're going to see is some couple of contour lines and a, and a little blue box. Let's check it out in 3D and you'll see what it is. Now you've got the blue box there, which is regular lines on zero. And then you actually see uh, the contours that actually the engineer put in and notice they actually go up. They have different elevations as they go up. Is that working? Okay. So if you have that from the uh, from the engineer, it's easy to bring in, right? You bring it in, you can rotate it, do whatever you do to normally get it oriented and, and have it looking good. Now it's time to convert it. Uh, what we're going to do is go up top, and uh, before we convert this thing, we want to know what layers we want to convert. So I'm going to add another little tidbit in here. I'd like you to grab the CAD file. Just go ahead and highlight the CAD file, and you'll see it says query. Now query is a, a, a weird little word, but it says pretty much um, ask a question of or go ahead and pull the information about. So what it does, it pulls the identity of an object and tells you what layer it's on. So hit query and then actually pick on one of the lines. And Revit will tell you that is a spline. It's on a layer called contour existing. And you're thinking, all right, cool. Go ahead and hit cancel on that. So we're going to tell Revit now to go in and find the contour existing layer and use that to set points. Everybody ready? Let's do it. We'll go back up to massing and site. When we hit masking inside, we're going to go to Topo Surface. When we hit Topo Surface, I'm going to come on over, and you'll see it says Create from Import. When we hit Create from Import, I'm going to say Select the end select Imported Instance. So I select the CAD file. Now Revit comes up and says, Dude, I got 27 freaking layers here. Which one you want me to convert? I'm like, whoa, okay. I'm going to hit Check None. And if I remember correctly, it was Contour Existing. So I'll turn that on. So now it's going to take all those lines and create a Topo Surface based on that math. Hit OK. You're done. Time to go home. Um, if you go to 3D, hit Finish. Now at the top you have the little, the little green check mark. You have just created a topo. If you go to 3D, spin this thing around, you'll notice that it does have, it's like cardboard. And you can see the edges as you move around. Now, the one, you don't see the ones underneath that plane because of the view range. Um, that's what's, and, and this thing's getting in the way. Now, let's go ahead and take that CAD file, just go ahead and delete it. You may have to unpin it and then delete it, but we'll get rid of it. Hit a little X, and it's gone. So what we're left with is this contour. Can't select it. Can't select it. Check down at the bottom here, and it may not be right here. It may say, don't let me select uh, pinned layers. I normally leave all these on, Dixon. I mean, X is on all of them. So, see, I, I probably couldn't pick that box either because it was a, a link. So, make sure the pin is unchecked, has an, is alive, no X, and the link has no X. And you can't pick on that box? Uh -huh. All right. Uh, so, now that we have the, uh, the graphic here, we'll talk about adjusting um, the line work. You'll notice that it looks very uh, monolithic, 
monotone, whatever word you want to use. Uh, I want to add some vari variations to this. So let's go on to Masking Insight. And you notice this big old massive button right here. See that little bitty like four pixel arrow? Um, that is actually your settings. So we'll hit that little arrow. That little arrow comes down, and those are the settings that get you to set up. Now you can have a single marker, and it will, uh, like a line, you can have multiple markers. Now you'll see it says start at zero and go up to a thousand feet. That's why when I can add contours down here. So I'm going to set this one to let's say minus uh, maybe 100 feet and hit apply on that and I should get the rest of my contour, see? Because it started zero and go up. So I said okay, there you go. So I just went and changed it so it's picking up everything. Now these contours are at, let's say, with the main ones at 10 feet increments and then the little ones that looks like one foot increments. Now notice they're both pulling uh, primary contours and primary contours. We're gonna go change these colors, that way they look good. So all I did was I set this down to negative 100. If you didn't do that, not a big deal, we'll fix it in a moment, we hit okay. Now remember we can change things global or we can change them per view. I'm gonna go global, I'm gonna go to manage, object styles, and then these are all your lines. So I'll do that again. Manage, right, which is right here. For manage, we go over to object styles, which is this one. All right, so now here we are. And we go down toward the bottom. And under the bottom, you'll see topography, and we'll expand that out. You'll notice that the primary contours and the secondary contours look identical. So I'm going to say my secondary contours, I'm going to make them dashed and gray. Again, you pick whatever color you want and whatever line type you want. So I'm just going to pick something different. Primary contour, I may make that maybe some type of red or orange. Just so it stands out on our screen. I hit OK on that. At this point, everything turns red. You're like, ah, dude. Rabbit, rabbit. Ah. So let's go back to our massing in sight. I'm going to roll out that little bitty arrow again. And I want you to notice that both of them are set to primary. So you subcategory, primary, primary. We'll set this guy to secondary. When you hit apply, you'll see the difference. Is that working? Now let's say you have a line, let's say it's a flood line or something, or it's the edge of a river. And you know that marker is at, let's say, in this instance, I'm going to say maybe 35 feet. You can actually insert another marker here. See, it says insert, hit insert. So it'll insert one. Now, see, it says single value. All right, so I can say start at, let's say, I don't know, let's say start at 37 feet. All right. And notice the other ones are grayed out. Single value. See, it says contour, secondary contour primary contour, triangulation, hidden edges, hidden lines. You're like, well, I don't have one. I want to have one that says river edge. So we're actually going to go a little crazy now. See, it says 37, secondary. So I'm not really getting anything. I want to make a river edge. Once you've got a 37 in there, single value, I'll come back to it. Let's go back now to manage object styles. Now you hit object styles, once you go all the way to the bottom and you'll see topography again. Now the interesting thing about Revit is, you may have heard me say many times before, you can't create new categories in Revit, but you can create subcategories. Now in a subcategory, you'll notice right here, I'll roll my mouse over it and ping it a couple of times, and also right here. So I'm gonna call it maybe River Edge, or you know, Flood Line, or whatever marker you want it to be, right? So I hit New, I'll say River Edge. River's Edge, Mean. <clears throat> so I'll put that in there and I'm going to change it to a particular color now again the color is up to you line weights up to you all that is what you want to put in here so I set it set it to blue and okay so what we did we actually created a sub layer which is kind of cool Go once you get that sub layer set I'm going back up to my masking in sight I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to say my 37, single value, drop it down, and you see the sublayer, rivers mean edge, river edge. So I changed it here, hit OK. 
and you'll see that's marked in my model now. So what that does is it's giving you the ability to add markers. Let's say you have a, a, a low and a high for that river. You could, in theory, go back and put three markers in there and have them different color coded so you could see it's a high, high tide, low tide, whatever you want it to show, a flood, flood, flood stage. But that is really how you can uh, have a good time with these. Now, that works. The nice thing about it is, notice we're in 3D. If you were to go to, let's say, the site plan, uh, notice it's in the site plan also. So those colors are throughout the project, being that we use those tools. If, we, if you come in and say, oh, you know what, that flood stage is actually only 37.4, like, oh, well, no problem. Come in here, change that number, 37.4, hit apply, and see, it just moved it. Now I get that marker. So that is an easy way to set up that line work there. Now, due to the scale, um, that's why it looks um, so thin. But if I change the scale to something different, you may notice to see the line weight a little better. So, mm -hmm. so like if, it, if this was your topo had like a valley, and it was at th the river was at 37 feet on both sides, it would show up on both. Yeah, it would show up on both sides, right? Yeah. So if I brought this up, let's say I'm going to uh, raise this up, and I want to see, I'm going to raise this out of the water. You could actually take this topo surface, edit surface, and I could put points in here. So now I, what I did there, I'm going to do a quick place points. I'm going to put my points at now, let's say maybe 40 feet, and I go click, 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 click. See how these are starting to pop out of the uh, of the water. Mm -hmm. That's where the water's edge would be. So uh, kind of a fun little thing there. So I'd have to get these points out. See these ones in the middle here. Let me hit escape a couple times. There's points in here I'd have to get rid of in that area to um, to bring it all up at its surface. So there, there's a point. See right there? I need to get that point up. So there's a lot of points I'd probably have to get up. All of these, I have to get those up to at least, uh, I think I was around 40 feet. And now it's an island. So we've got a pretty steep drop off right there at finish. Let's check it out in 3D, and you'll see how that, that, that little island sits up, and there's our blue line underneath it. Any more questions, comments on that? Don't build down here. Build up here.